<laughs> See, uh, we usually have like four questions for, for uh, our, our uh, attendees. So the first question, when the candidate went through the phone screening and he is in a phone interview with you or maybe in a face-to-face -face interview, what are you looking in the candidate? Uh, during my first conversation or first call with them, I definitely look for the passion. What kind of passion they have for the job. And how do you know uh, what kind of passion do they have? So um, when they talk to me or any hiring manager for that matter, I expect them to do some kind of research on the company. Uh, of course, they should know what position they are applying for. Uh, knowing the, what the job takes, what the expectations are from the job, and getting a little bit more into detail on the interview panel if they want to call you for in person interview. Uh, the kind of question they ask, and of course the quality of the resume. After, after all, we are QA engineers, QA analysts. Our resume should be without any errors, and I see a lot still on the QA the resumes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the second question, uh, do you have any favorite questions in, during the interview? Uh, In-person interviews, we all, I always like to make sure uh, we do whiteboarding sessions. And I do make sure that the interviewer candidates know that before they come on site that this is what we expect. I don't enforce any particular language that they need to code in, but they can use anything they want they're comfortable with. So I expect them to do a lot of whiteboarding when they're on site. And any red flags during the interview, like you, you know, anything like which is bringing your mind? Sure. I mean, like I said, the number one uh, red flag I see when people don't proof check their resumes, it's kind of bad if you're coming for an interview and you have not read your resume. Second thing I see, uh, people write a lot of uh, skills on their resume and when you ask questions about those skills, they're not able to answer. That's a definite no no for me. And third thing is again going back to, if you're interviewing for a particular company, know what they do. So for example, if you're applying for a job here at ABC Mouse or Age of Learning, at least try creating an account and understand what this product is all about and know what you're going to work on. Yeah. Totally makes sense. And do you have any resumes, uh, tips and hints? Like, what are you looking for in the resume? You've got like, well, you are looking multiple resumes, right? Yeah. And some of them you just okay, next, right? And some of them, oh, that's interesting. Can you elaborate about that? Sure. Um, what I sometimes let people know is like try to customize their resume for the job. I know it's not always possible, it does help. Uh, like you said, there are hundreds of resumes on your desk, on a hiring manager's desk, and you don't have time to read everything. So if you customize your resume to what the job requirements are, that filters and puts you on the top. And other than that, try to keep it short. Um, if you have um, a lot of experience, if you're just uh, someone who is starting the career, uh, expanding their resume is fine. And of course, if a co company has multiple positions, for example, if there's a QA tester position available and a QA manager or lead, don't apply to both. Uh, right. It is really confusing and it just shows how unsure you are about your skills or your level. So evaluate yourself, see what you are capable of doing, and then apply. Don't just apply to all the positions out there. Um, can you give me an example? I mean, when you got the resume, right? Yeah. Usually it takes you six to 10 seconds to uh, understand like, if you are interested or not, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what is the very first thing? What are you looking for? Like, okay. Is it, is it uh, education? Is it uh, experience? Is it some keywords? Something like that. Keywords definitely help. Uh, also, first thing that my eyes go towards are um, if they are job hoppers. Unless you're uh, contracting, there's no reason for you to change jobs every six months. Um, that's kind of a red flag for me. Um, for anyone to be really successful and 
show some progress uh, in any company, it takes you about six to one year to actually implement a framework or even put some processes and actually deliver something. Um, six months are not enough for that. So definitely I look at the duration tenure at each company. Yeah. All right, great. I think that was really helpful. Any questions do we have? Here we go. Hello, yes. um, so um, I'm a QA, and a very popular QA profession that people are going into in the last 10 years or so is in video games. And um, if you all have seen the media, video game companies typically contract out, and they usually lay off mass, and usually it's a per project basis. So for the situations where someone does have a temporary employment uh, track, uh, going from the bouncing from company to company, not necessarily on their own uh, power, what, what are some uh, advice or hints that you can do for your resume to show that it wasn't on your terms, <laughs> that your career path changed so drastically? And that shows that you're more focused on a career path that is for like a company specific and you wanna last there for a long time, like you're not a project hopper. Yeah. So good question, uh, Pat. Uh, and the situation that you explained is more so common with uh, studios where uh, projects last for six months or 12 months. And with, I think with us, being upfront about your experience or the projects, uh, I think any hiring manager should uh, be should understand the situation. And even in that case, um, uh, if if you want to be upfront or if you want to make sure uh, it's evident on your resume, you can club all your experiences together rather than like three months here, three months there, three months, and you can just make it various and then break out, uh, say, two years with four projects within it. So. It just looks better, I think. Anybody else? Well, perfect. Hello. Um, so, if you have an employee and they came to you and they said, "Hey, um, I got another job offer," what goes to your what's your thought process in terms of? that situation, like, do I keep this person? What, what's my qualification for keeping this person? Do I want to counter offer or not counter offer? So I'm sure you've run into that situation. Yep. Damn it, that's a tricky question. <laughs> uh, depends on how important this person is. Uh, it is a business we are trying to run. Everybody is trying to run a team. Um, uh, check first for what reasons they are leaving this particular role or particular job. Is it because of money or job satisfaction or any personal reason? Uh, if it's more money, um, see if this is something that uh, your company can work around with. If it's job satisfaction, understand why they are dissatisfied uh, with the job. Try if, if that person is a really good employee, you might want to move them to some other team where they might be more uh, uh, happier. So um, I think it's a case by case. I wouldn't just go ahead and start um, making counter offers to everyone who's leaving my team. I think he can also give you uh, make you a favor. Just leave the company, right? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I have a question on the same topic of the job offer. Uh, let's say uh, you decided on this particular candidate, you loved him, and uh, you uh, send that person a job offer, and he says that he got another job offer from another company, which is much higher. Are you considering the amount? Uh, are you considering to match it, or what's your strategy in that case, and do you ask for that other company job offer just to confirm that it exists? So many tricky questions that come up. 
definitely I wouldn't check the other offer. Uh, that's something I would leave up to HR, but my uh, suggestion to HR in this case, if this particular candidate is a superstar, uh, who is someone that, uh, uh, who is going to uh, change uh, the project overnight, then I will make some exceptions, work with HR and make sure if it's within budget, within reasonable budget, try whatever we can to bring him on board, him or her on board. Yeah, but I wouldn't go to the extent of uh, cross-checking the other offers, never. No. <laughs> I think it's case by case, right? Yeah. All right. Now we have questions. Hello to everyone. I'm going to go with a simple question. Um, when hiring manager asks you like about salary stuff, right? So what's your minimum salary? Or what's your minimum expectation, right? And let's say if I say like 80K, right? Uh, and uh, after passing interview, why they always go with uh, my minimum uh, requirements? <laughs> Courtney, I need your help. <laughs> Courtney is our talent management uh, manager here. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Courtney, but we are not supposed to ask uh, salary requirements or salary history. Yeah. So hopefully you can hear me. Um, employers are not allowed to ask you what you're currently making in your role. With that being said, a recruiter or an HR professional or a hiring manager for a smaller company can ask you, how much do you want to make? And so the candidate gives us a range, oh, I'm looking between 80 to 130. A, a, a good HR professional or a good hiring manager will drill down into that conversation. They'll be like, okay, so we have budgeted for this role between 75 to 85. Are you comfortable accepting $80,000 annually? If the answer is yes, and you confirm that that number is what you're comfortable with, you should be working with that person. Going through an interview process should be more of like a, a relationship building exercise than a surprise at the end where you're like, this offer doesn't make sense to me. So I would encourage all of you who are looking for a job to have those conversations earlier in the process and really loop in that person that you're talking to. If you're not comfortable accepting that lower end of the range, consider bringing your range up. Feel like this is a reoccurring thing that happens, um, and yeah, just partner with that person as closely as you can. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, you guys have a really cool space here, so maybe can you? I mean, I've seen abcmouse.com on here. Can you tell us a little bit about what your company does, and especially what your QA team does? Sure. So for those who are not familiar with Age of Learning, we are an ed tech company um, uh, where we were able to blend in current educational trends with uh, cutting edge technology. Uh, this is helping kids, um, our current uh, flagship product is ABC Mouse, which is available on desktop and mobile. Uh, areas that uh, ABC Mouse cover, it's a flagship product and it covers like art, math, science, um, music, everything. And it helps uh, children between the age two to eight uh, get better uh, academically. It's a early learning uh, tool, we say. Uh, it's available for families, uh, to teachers in school around the world. And just uh, earlier this summer, we launched a MMO game um, called Adventure Academy, and which is targeted towards uh, children between uh, in elementary and middle school. Again, it creates a safe and uh, close environment for kids to play. Again, more than it's the first educational MMO. And uh, we have some other projects too, like Reading IQ, which is an online uh, advanced library uh, with thousands of uh, books from leading publishers around the world. And um, most of our testing is around these products. Um, we do follow Agile here, two week sprint cycles. And um, since uh, products are available on desktop and on mobile, uh, teams are testing across both. Uh, as of uh, last year, we uh, started our uh, test automation initiative uh, on desktop and mobile. 
we at the, at the as of last year, end of last year, our desktop um, regression test cases were 90% automated, and then this year we started our focus on mobile, which is uh, right there. We are ready to roll it out to production. So depending on what team you are on, we could be working on any of these projects, and we are trying to build this centralized um, test automation framework um, that will serve all these products. All right, thank you very much, Sid. I think that was very useful and helpful today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.